Welcome to the radio broadcast and the television broadcast and the web broadcast, Rush Limbaugh. Hi, Melody. How are you doing? Yay! I am so excited to see you. What is the deal with you, dude? You never get older looking. I'm telling you, you I look fantastic. Thinking, I was just thinking the same thing about you. You're talking about, about Kansas City, and uh, you look just as great today as you did then. Keep it up, you smooth talker. There's a future in radio for you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, Rush. Tell us, I, I, you know, most people don't know this about you, of course. You're detractors, uh, of which there are two that uh, exist out there. The, the rest of America loves you, loves you. But uh, they say that, uh, you know, you're a cold, heartless guy. But what they don't know is what I know about you, which is that you have personally contributed $200,000 to our effort today and in previous years. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> See, they love you. You have been let's an add, amazing let's, let's, I, you, you, you walked me into it, but let's add 100000 to it <gasps> this, uh, this year, too. Because, oh, my God! You know, oh. 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 The uh, United States military, and I had a chance uh, to go to Afghanistan, uh, a troop visit, I think it was three years ago. And one of, one of the reasons I wanted to go was, was simply, as I grow older, uh, I have a, a greater and greater appreciation. I become more and more in awe of the people who volunteer to do what they do. They do something that, you know, 99 and a half percent of the population of the country would not do. And they do it for the greatest of reasons. And in, in the last seven or eight years, uh, was so tumultuous during the war in Iraq and the Bush administration, I was really offended to hear them impugned. Well, they only join because there's no future in America. They don't have any chance to get an education. The economy's rotten and so forth. And I, you know, whether you disagree with the war in Iraq, why impugn the people that volunteer? Uh, traditionally and historically, they're the reason that we're free. And it's not a cliche to say that, even though uh, everybody does. And any, any, you know, one of the most, uh, 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 sacred, uh, happiest days of my life was 2003 in the summertime. I came home from, from work one day and there was a FedEx package and I opened it up and there was a Ziploc bag with an American flag properly folded and certificates of fighter jets and tanker jets that that flag had flown on during the original bombing runs, the invasion of Iraq in 2003. And the ringleader of the guys that set that up was a guy named Lieutenant Colonel Marcus Sara who flew the tanker uh, and then got the, uh, the flag and all the other jets, there were six of them, certificates authorizing. They did this in my honor. I had no idea they were doing it. That flag now is framed in a position of honor in my house, as are the certificates. Um, Mark uh, and his wife were at my wedding uh, earlier, well, this past month. Uh, I, 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 all I do is talk on the radio, and these guys were thinking about me on the bonding run. I, that's very humbling. And I, I've... Uh, Talk to these guys in Afghanistan. The opportunity to tell them how much that they're loved and appreciated, despite how they're portrayed in the media at the time, uh, and and how much uh, they're really respected was an opportunity I didn't want to pass up. And I anything what you're doing for them, send these care packages. A lot of people think the military takes care of all that for them, and they don't. Uh, it's impossible for the military to do for everybody what you guys are doing. It's a great thing, and it's just a tremendous opportunity for me to be part of it. I really want to thank you for letting. Uh, now, don't do that to me because I have I put a lot of time and effort in makeup here and hair, and I'm about to start crying if you if you say anything. I, okay, Rush uh, Andrew Breitbart, of course, is a good friend of yours, and 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 Debbie Lee and Mark Williams uh, have been your admirers um, for a lot of years. Andrew, I know that it's it's just an amazing moment for all of us to have you here today. Well, I, I met Mark uh, at his wedding. I talked to him for about an hour. And we talked about how the Rush Limbaugh's of the world are the people that are out there uh, supporting them, uh, unlike many people. I mean, there are a lot more people in Hollywood that support them than you can possibly imagine. But when they're out there and popular culture is beating them down, it's Rush Limbaugh 15 hours a week that is constantly giving the moral conviction to go yeah. out there and fight. And that Mark was telling me, you have no idea how much these guys appreciate Rush Limbaugh. It's true, Rush. You do not. <laughs> It really is. It really is. But see, this is the this is the thing. I, I I'll tell you another quick little story. National Review had their 50th anniversary uh, uh, party, the magazine, at a at, at some very palatial hall in Washington, and I was invited to sit at Mr. Buckley's table. 
and they had invited some uh, recovering wounded from Walter Reed, and there were eight or ten of them, and missing eyeballs, missing limbs. And uh, one of these, two of the guys had asked to meet me, so I went over, uh, and I, they started thanking me for what I'm doing. I'm looking at guys who have I mean, come close to making the ultimate sacrifice, and, and uh, they're, they're thanking me. And I, I put my hands up, and I said, wait a minute, you guys, I mean, I, I appreciate it. I'm not trying to diminish what you're saying, but why? I'm on the radio saying, I'm talking. Uh, you guys are front line. You're in the theater. And the guy put his hand up. He said, we all have our roles. And we it's true. We all do I, have the, our the, roles. The, the humility these guys have, the discipline that they have, men and women too. I don't mean to say guys, but the people, they're volunteer to do this, the discipline they have, the devotion they have. Uh, and especially, you know, I don't want to get political in your show here, but there, there, there really is not the leadership they should have going on right now, and yet they're still there. And I, you just have to love them. And people like you who are doing what you're doing and organizing uh, collective efforts like this, uh, giving your time or to be as, uh, as applauded as well, too. When we were in Iraq in 2005, that was one of the things that people were asking me about is you and, and your support for, their tr for the troops. Um, this is the thing that concerns me the very most right now is that our troops are in danger of being forgotten to death right now because 2005 the war wasn't going as well as it could have been going. It has since changed dramatically on the ground in Iraq. We now have the challenge, the additional challenge of Af Afghanistan, but we cannot stop talking about the troops just because they, th these wars have disappeared off the headlines in the front pages of newspapers, which I guess all, you know, a few people read these days, or the internet, or wherever you get your news source. <clears throat> all the more reason to applaud the effort that you're, you're, you're taking and making now, I mean, you're, you're, and you're exactly right about it. Um, it seems like in our highly charged political times, uh, the military ought not be a political institution, but it's become that. And so since, since we have an administration now which doesn't want to emphasize successful military operations, they're not on the front page, uh, and the successes that they record are not being reported, uh, and, and they deserve for that to happen. You know, I, they watched, Melanie, you saw, they, they've got the news on where they are. They, they, at least it was in Afghanistan. Uh, I know McChrystal didn't want them watching news, any network, where he was, but they do. And I, when I was there, the question, why are we, in Afghanistan particularly, why are we not being talked about? What we were having some, at the time, what was it, three or four years ago, we're having some great success. Why is it not being reported on? I said, that's why. Uh, our media back home is focused on trying to make a rock something that's unsuccessful, and you guys don't fit the template. And I just think it's a crying shame that the military gets plugged into and taken out of, of, of media templates. So God bless all of you for what you're doing. We know your time is limited. We're extremely grateful. I have to just tell you real quickly, ever since you mentioned uh, the truthathon.org, which is our website location where people can go to donate on your radio program, um, the orders started coming in every 10 seconds. The power of your voice out there reaching across America to support our brave men and women in the United States military. God bless you. Thanks God bless us. all of you, and thanks again for the chance to be uh, the lead-off guest on this great show. Always. Thank you, Rush. Thank you, Rush Limbaugh. Thank you, guys. <laughs>